In this tutorial, you're going to learn all about what ChatGPT is, how it works, and most importantly, how you can use it to boost your productivity as a software developer. As a seasoned developer and teacher, let me tell you, ChatGPT is a game changer you don't want to miss out on. Don't take my word for it, just watch this video and see for yourself. My name is Mosh Hamadani, and I'm super excited to be bringing you this tutorial on ChatGPT. I've helped millions of people learn to code and become professional software engineers through this channel and my online school, CodeWithMosh.com. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. So what exactly is ChatGPT and how does it work? ChatGPT is a cutting edge AI tool created by OpenAI. It was released in November 2022 and gained 1 million users in just five days. In comparison, it took Netflix three and a half years and Instagram two and a half months to get the same number of users. ChatGPT is an advanced language model that can understand and generate text. You can use it to create content for your website, write articles, emails, tweets, cover letters, and so on. You can also use it to generate code in a number of different programming languages like Python, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and much, much more. You can use it to generate dummy data, write unit tests, translate text or code from one language to another. You can use it to explain code. For example, if there's a piece of code you don't understand, you can ask it and it will explain to you like a patient teacher. But I have to be honest, sometimes it explains too much. ChatGPT can also help you learn and remember things faster. For example, you can give it some text and have it ask you a bunch of questions. It can also prepare you for job interviews. You can have it improve your resume, write a cover letter for you, and also interview you like an interviewer. Now, do you think ChatGPT is gonna take your job? Let me know in the comments below. The reality is, whether you like it or not, ChatGPT is here to stay. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to use it to get more creative and get things done a lot faster. I'll be showing you various examples for different programming languages, both for beginners and experienced developers. But before we dive into that, let's take a moment and understand how ChatGPT works. ChatGPT uses a type of artificial intelligence called a language model. A language model is a type of software that is designed to understand and generate human language. It does this by looking at a large amount of text data and learning the patterns and rules of a language. For example, if the language model is trained on a lot of English text, it will learn about the grammar and structure of English, as well as the meanings of words and how they are used in different contexts. Once the language model has learned about a language, it can then be used to generate text in that language. Now, ChatGPT provides different language models for different purposes. GPT-3 models, which are designed to understand and generate natural language like English, and Codex, which are specifically trained to understand and generate code. These models are trained on billions of lines of code publicly available on GitHub. They're mostly capable in Python, but they're also pretty good in a bunch of other languages like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, TypeScript, Ruby, SQL, and more. Now, before we look at specific examples, remember, ChatGPT, like any tool, has limitations. It might sometimes generate incorrect, harmful, or biased information. So don't take whatever it tells you as a silver bullet. Don't use it to learn to code. Because the code that is generated is not guaranteed to be right. It might be functional, but it might not be the best way to code. So in a nutshell, ChatGPT is a powerful tool that can help you be more creative and efficient, but it's not a substitute for human expertise and judgment. So that's the theory part. Now let's move on and see ChatGPT in action. So head over to chat.openai.com. If you don't have an account, sign up. It takes only a minute. Once you have logged in, you're going to see the main screen with an input box to talk to ChatGPT. There is also a Chrome extension and a desktop application available if you don't want to use the web interface. I'll put the links down below this video. All right, now let's get to the fun part. Going forward, I'll be showing you various use cases for different programming languages. We'll start off with some general purpose questions that apply to anyone, regardless of the programming languages and tools they use. You will see how you can use ChatGPT to learn new things, write shell scripts, get commands, start a business, write legal documents, and so on. Once we cover the basics, then we'll dive into specific examples for front-end, back-end, and database development. I will show you examples using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, TypeScript, Python, SQL, and more. 
Now, here's my first question. What are the top three books for learning Java? All right, as you can see, ChatGPT has given us a very comprehensive and detailed answer. Now, here we can ask more detailed questions. For example, we can ask questions about the first book. So we can ask, what are the key takeaways from Head First Java? All right, another comprehensive answer. You can see that this book teaches you about object-oriented programming, Java fundamentals, threading and concurrency, GUI programming, and so on. Now we can also ask more general questions, like how do I become a front-end developer? So now ChatGPT is saying that to become a front-end developer, you need to know the basics of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You should practice building websites. Then you should learn a front-end framework like React, Angular, Vue, and so on. You should also know about version control systems like Git, GitHub, and so on. This is pretty much the same answer you will find on every website that gives you a roadmap to become a front-end developer. Now let's look at more specific examples. We can ask ChatGPT to write a shell command for us. For example, we can say, write a bash command to find the name of all JPEG files in a directory and write them all to a text file. Take a look. I love this answer. So if you're not good with Linux commands, you can easily find the final instruction you should use to solve that problem. But what is beautiful about ChatGPT is that it also explains how this command works line by line, piece by piece. We can also have ChatGPT write Git commands for us. For example, we can ask, how do I know how many lines of code I've committed to a Git repository? We can also use ChatGPT to get creative. For example, let's say you want to start a business. You can have ChatGPT generate app or website names for you. For example, we can say, I want to make a revolutionary online shopping app. Give me some good app names. So ChatGPT is suggesting names like Shop is, Swift Cart, Streamline, and so on. I think this list is pretty damn good. Now, these are just some example prompts. You don't need to use the exact same wording to talk to ChatGPT. You can ask any questions you want in your own way. Now, if you have used this tool before, let us know in the comments below the interesting questions you have asked so we can all learn and inspire each other. We can also ask ChatGPT to write contracts for us. Here's an example. I want to hire a graphic designer to design my website. We have agreed that they will deliver the first draft in two weeks and offer three iterations free of charge. Any iteration after will be charged at $50 an hour. Write a contract for us. So the more details we give to ChatGPT, the better response we'll get. All right, take a look. This is a pretty damn good contract to start with. Of course, you don't want to take this as is and use it in the real world without first passing it by a real lawyer. That's why earlier I told you that ChatGPT is not a replacement for humans, at least not at the moment. It's just a way to increase your productivity and get things done in less time. Now, if you're applying for a job, there are a number of ways ChatGPT can help you. For example, you can have it write a resume for you. Here we can say, I have three years of experience coding in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Write a resume for me. Of course, we can give it more details. We can explain our education level, our past projects, and so on. But look at what we get with this simple prompt. All right, take a look. So ChatGPT created a basic layout that includes our name, address, phone number, email, some objective, summary, technical skills, and it has already listed all the related web technologies. So we have HTML, CSS, JavaScript, 
jQuery, Bootstrap, we didn't mention any of this, but it assumed that we have these skills. It also included a section about professional experience, including past projects, as well as education, certifications, and so on. Again, it's a great starting point. Now, let's say you're applying for a front-end developer role. You can ask ChatGPT to write a cover letter for you that you can email to that company. So we can say, I'm applying for a front-end engineer role at some company. Write a cover letter for me. All right, take a look. We have a comprehensive cover letter beautifully written in perfect English. How good is that? Now, let me show you another fun one. You can have ChatGPT ask you interview questions. We can say act as a technical interviewer and ask me five questions about JavaScript. Take a look. All right, so here we have five questions that are often asked in technical interviews. Now, let's say you don't know the answer to the first question. We can ask a follow-up question. So the beauty of ChatGPT is that it remembers everything you have told it in this conversation thread. So here we can say, what is the answer to the first question? Again, we get a very comprehensive, detailed answer. You can also ask ChatGPT to help you write emails. For example, we can say, write an email to my boss asking for a raise. I've worked at this company for two years and successfully delivered several projects on time. Seriously, if I wanted to write this myself, it would take me 10 to 15 minutes, if not longer. I got the answer in just two seconds. All right, now let's look at a few examples involving code. We'll start with using Python for writing a command line tool. We can say, write a Python function for generating a random password. So as you can see, we get a piece of code beautifully highlighted with explanation of how it works. Now, if there's a part of this code that you don't understand, you can always ask follow-up questions. For example, we can ask what this expression does in this code. So we can ask, what does for in i range of length do in this code? Take a look. Really, really useful. Couldn't be better. Now we can also ask computer science questions like, what is the time complexity of this function? Now, if you're not familiar with this concept, time complexity is a way to explain how large inputs impact the performance of an algorithm. It's really beyond the scope of this tutorial. I've covered it in detail in my data structures course in case you're interested. So let's see what we get. So ChatGPT is saying that this function's time complexity is linear. Now let's take this to the next level. We can ask ChatGPT to write unit tests for this function. So write unit tests for this function. Seriously, how good is this? If I wanted to write all these unit tests by hand, it would take me probably 20 to 30 minutes, if not longer. Of course, we should always use our own judgment to make sure that the tests are correct. But I think this code is a great starting point and it really saves us a lot of time. We can also ask ChatGPT for ideas to improve our code. For example, here on w3schools.com, we have this piece of Python code where we use a for loop to iterate over a list of fruits. If the fruit has A in it, then we add it to a new list. I'm gonna copy this code and give it to ChatGPT to see how we can improve this code. So take a look. How can I improve this code? Now here we should hold Shift and then press Enter. So we go to the next line. Now we paste our code and then press Enter to submit the question. All right, look, a lot of details, absolutely amazing. One thing I love here is that ChatGPT is suggesting to use a list comprehension. 
which is a one-liner for implementing the same logic. Of course, there are more ways to improve this code. We're not going to get into details here. We can also ask ChatGPT to convert our code from one language to another. For example, we can say, convert this Python code to JavaScript. Incredible. In just a few seconds, our code was converted to JavaScript. And down below, we have all the details about how this code works. We can also use ChatGPT to generate dummy data. For example, we can say generate dummy data for a table called customers. Each customer should have an ID, first name, last name, and city. Now, in this case, ChatGPT gave us a Python script for generating dummy data. But what if we want the actual data, not a Python script? We can say, I don't need a Python script. Just give me the data. So now we get a list of 10 people represented using the JSON format. Now we can take this to the next level and say, create a Python class for storing these objects. All right, look, we get an example of a Python class called customer, along with how we can use this class to store a bunch of customer objects inside the list. Absolutely beautiful. Now, if you're a front-end developer, you can ask ChatGPT to generate some HTML markup for you. And this is where examples get more and more interesting. For example, we can say, write the HTML and CSS code for displaying a card. All right, take a look. We have the markup. Here we have a div with the class of card. Inside the div, we have an image. Then we have the card content. Inside this div, we have the card title and card description. Really, really good. And right below that, we have all the CSS we need to display a beautiful card. Of course, we probably need to customize this. But again, this is a great starting point. Now we can stop here or we can customize this further. For example, we can say, add a button below the card content. All right, look what happened. So now we have a new markup right under the card description. We have a new div with the class of card action. And inside this div, we have a button. Beautiful. Now, we also have more styles for this button. We have the plain styles as well as the styles for the hover effect. Now let's take this to the next level. We can say, when I hover my mouse over the card, I want the card to slightly slide up. So ChatGPT is suggesting that we should use the hover pseudo class and the translate function, translate Y, to slide the card up. Beautiful, I love it. It's also suggesting an alternative solution using box shadow. So it's pretty up to speed with CSS features. Now let me show you something really cool. We can ask ChatGPT to rewrite this code using Tailwind CSS. If you're not familiar with Tailwind, it's a CSS library that has gained a lot of popularity lately. So here we can say, can you rewrite this code using Tailwind CSS? There you go. Now we have the same markup, but with the utility classes that come with Tailwind CSS. So we don't have to create CSS classes anymore. Now here we can get more creative and see what other UI libraries are supported. Next, we can bring some JavaScript to the mix and make this interactive. So we can say, when I click on the button, send an HTTP request to slash API slash products. All right, let's look at the generated code. So ChatGPT is suggesting to use the Fetch API that is supported in pretty much most modern browsers, but I personally don't like to use the Fetch API. So I'm going to customize this further and say, instead of the Fetch API, 
use Axios, which is a library for sending HTTP requests. Now take a look. All right, now we have the instructions for installing Axios using NPM or Yarn, as well as a modified example using Axios. Beautiful. We can also ask ChatGPT to help us with compile time or runtime errors. Here is an example. Let's say as part of writing some JavaScript code, we got an error saying uncaught type error, cannot read property, let's say bar of undefined. Anyone who has written a little bit of JavaScript code has probably come across this error. So we can copy paste the error message here. Now ChatGPT explains exactly what this error is and how we can potentially solve it. So going forward, I think a lot of people will start to use ChatGPT instead of Google. Now we can also throw React here and make the example more interesting. So we can say create a React component for displaying a card. All right, let's see what's happening here. So up here we have an example of a function component for displaying a card. Now, I personally don't like to have a parameter called props. It would be nicer to destructure this parameter and grab individual properties like title, description, and so on. Now, if you're not familiar with this concept, don't worry, just continue watching. We're not gonna do a lot of fancy JavaScript stuff in this video. This is just to open your eyes to the possibilities. So let's take this to the next level and say, destructure the props parameter. So the beautiful thing about ChatGPT is that it remembers our conversations. So let's go ahead. All right, now we have a new implementation of the card component with the props parameter destructured. All right, now let's move on and look at a few examples involving backend development. For example, we can ask ChatGPT to build an API for us with Node and Express. So here we can say, I need an API built with express.js to return the list of products. Each product should have attributes like ID, title, description, price, and image URL. All right, look at this implementation. In this implementation, we have an area of products stored in memory and we have an API endpoint exposed at this URL. I don't want to have an area of products in memory. I want these products to be stored in a MongoDB database. So here we can say, modify the code and retrieve the products from a MongoDB or a MySQL or a Postgres, whatever, database. Now, we get a new implementation where products are retrieved from a MongoDB database using the Mongoose library. Here it is. Now in this implementation, the type of these parameters is not clear because this code is just plain JavaScript. Now we can improve this implementation and use TypeScript. So we can say, use TypeScript in this code. Now we have a new implementation of the same web server implemented using TypeScript. Now let's say you're a Python developer, you don't wanna use JavaScript. So here we can say, generate this API using Python and fast API, which is another library for building APIs using Python. So. All right, now we have a new implementation, but in this implementation, our products are stored in memory. Again, we can talk to ChatGPT and customize this further. All right, now let's look at a few examples involving databases. This one is pretty interesting. So I'm gonna say, write a SQL query to generate a table called products with four columns. Note that I'm not specifying the column names and types here. I'm just saying I want a product table with four columns. See what happens. Now look, ChatGPT is smart enough to know that quite often products have attributes like ID, title, description, and price. If this is not what you want, you can always specify the name and type of each column. 
For example, we can say, write a SQL query to generate a table called products with these columns. Now here we press shift and enter. So we go to the next line. And on each line, we can list a column. We can say ID of type integer, title of type string, category of type integer, unit price of type float, and image URL of type string. And you don't necessarily have to put the type in parentheses. You can type a colon, and right after that, you can specify the type. So ChatGPT doesn't have a particular syntax you have to follow because it can understand human language. All right, now in the products table, we have columns like ID, title, category, unit price, and so on. We can also use ChatGPT to write queries for retrieving or updating data. For example, here we can say, write a query to retrieve the top five customers in Manhattan. Note that we don't currently have a table called customers, so we're just asking ChatGPT to write a query to retrieve the top five customers in Manhattan. Take a look. All right, in this example, ChatGPT has assumed that we have a table called customers with these columns, ID, name, address, and city. If our customers table has a different schema, we need to specify that ahead of time. So we specify the name and type of each column. Then we ask ChatGPT to write a query to retrieve the top five customers. Now look at this query. In this query, we're simply selecting customers who are located in Manhattan. So in this query, the customers are sorted by their ID in descending order, and the top five are returned. This is not what we really want. What we want is the top customers who have spent the most. So we need to be more specific with our prompt. So we need to tell ChatGPT to do a join with the orders table to find out how much each customer has spent. Then it should grab the top five customers who have spent the most. So we can say, revise this query and join the customers table with the orders table to find out how much each customer has spent. Then pick the top five who have spent the most. And again, here we can specify the schema of the orders table as well. So let's go ahead. All right, look, now ChatGPT is assuming that we have two tables, customers with these columns and orders with these other columns. And based on this schema, it has revised our query to retrieve the top five customers who have spent the most. So that's it, guys. There are endless ways to get creative and use ChatGPT. I hope you found this video helpful. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this. Also, let me know in the comment section what interesting questions you have asked ChatGPT. I would love to hear from you. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.